use Ericsson is not really fishing. He's catching plastic trash in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, thousands of kilometers away from land. Ericsson is on a global expedition to document and publicize the growing accumulation of plastic in our oceans and to study its effect on marine and human life. So these are the five subtropical gyres in the world, so the majority of the plastic in the world accumulates. The gyre is, is formed by ocean currents um, that couple with the spinning of the Earth, the Earth's rotation. And what happens is that you have effectively a, a massive whirlpool this large spinning current system where debris can accumulate. Anna Cummings and husband Marcus Eriksen are the co-founders of the Five Gyres Institute, a California-based non-profit organization that promotes research into ocean pollution. Cummings says that in less than 100 years, we have replaced all the reusable products and materials with plastics that are used just briefly. At the end of its short use cycle, a plastic bag or bottle has little intrinsic value. The large majority end up in landfills or as litter in creeks and rivers. Eventually this waste washes out to sea where it enters swirling marine currents and over time travels thousands of kilometers. This becomes a problem in the marine environment because plastics are designed to last forever. They don't break down, they can't be digested by marine organisms, and they persist in the ocean for thousands of years. In their journey across the world's oceans, Ericsson and Cummings have been trolling the top 20 centimeters of the water's surface with a fine mesh net. Hundreds of samples are now being analyzed in a California lab. What shocked me the most on all these trips is to cross an ocean, to cross for thousands and thousands of miles, and find that every single sample we pull up has plastic. Some plastics in the ocean stay in large pieces for a long time, but many break into smaller particles. The plastic out there, it's not a condensed island of trash. It's really spread out, that it's this plastic soup that is from continent to continent. Animals mistakenly eat the smaller pieces of plastic or feed them to their young. Roughly 43% of all marine mammals, 86% of all sea turtle species, um, and 44% of all seabird species have been found with plastics in or around their bodies. 35% of the samples of fish that we collected in the North Pacific had plastic in their stomachs. Five Jarvis Institute and its research partners are now documenting the way plastics are entering the ocean food chain and their possible link to humans. I had a chance to do um, what's called a body burden analysis on my own blood. We looked into my blood serum to find do I have these same chemicals that we know stick to plastic and we found in my blood trace levels of PCBs, DDT, PFCs, and higher levels of flame retardants. We don't know how these chemicals entered my body. As a woman, I know that these chemicals in my body will pass on to the next generation. As part of their effort to raise public awareness of the plastic trash problem, Ericsson and his partners three years ago built an ocean-going raft using 15,000 empty plastic soda bottles. Naming their vessel John Raft, they set out from California to Hawaii, sailing through the North Pacific Gyro. The North Pacific Gyro, it's surprising if you go only 1,000 miles off the coast of California, which is 7,000 miles from Japan, you still get a lot of Japanese and Chinese plastic because the currents... Ericsson and Cummings recognize that cleansing the ocean of plastic will be nearly impossible since oceans cover two-thirds of the planet. That plastic trash will be with us for a long time, they believe. But there are other solutions. The solutions, they don't begin on the ocean. They begin on land. We also need to improve our re recycling infrastructure. Here in this country, um, in the United States, we only re recover and recycle roughly 5% of our plastics. Besides more plastic recycling, the husband and wife team advocates the wider use of biodegradable materials and the redesign of products so they are more fully recyclable. They also believe people around the world need to become more aware of plastic trash and its serious environmental and health impact. In March, Anna Cummings and Marcus Eriksson will begin the last of their ocean expeditions, this time sailing through the South Pacific gyro. On their return, the two activists plan to share their research findings with the scientific community and to publish a book about their ocean experiences. This is Sulima Palacio, VOA News. Yeah, can you hold this one? Go find some of the jars.